What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio by an amazing young woman named Linda (laughs) Bonner. Linda, how are you? Feeling young, Jay. I'm feeling very young. Well, you're only as old as you feel, Linda. So you guys, let uh, let me give you guys Linda's bio real quick here. She's an amazing guest, and this is going to be an amazing podcast, and it has already been manifested. She is a very passionate and about empowering others to succeed, and she's a breakthrough imposter syndrome coach, which is an amazing uh, statement in and of itself. Linda works with high-performing executives to ignite their self-confidence and maximize their potential and be leaders where they were born to be. She is combining 14 years of experience in education with her wealth of professional coach at accreditations. She also provides business executives and organizations with an outstanding personalized coaching service that educates, empowers, and encourages powerful, successful change through action. Her coaching experience includes a broad base of clients from leading global organizations through entrepreneurial startups. She's committed to the goals of her clients. She's a vivacious, energetic, and motivating coach, author, trainer, keynote speaker. And as I told her, you know, I get a lot of people nowadays, very blessed, uh, wanting to come on the Jay Campbell podcast and the agency that she was working with. I just, I saw her, uh, whatever that is, that bio document, whatever you want to call that. And uh, she exuded the energy oh, wow. necessary to be on the show. So again, welcome to the Jay Campbell podcast. Um, as I like to do now, Linda, with people that come on the show, as I told you, you know, really talk about the things that you and I are going to talk about, but kind of give me your insights as to what is going on on planet Earth today. And for the record, it is today, Thursday, December 2nd. Gosh, sometimes I don't know, Jay, I'll be completely honest with you. I really don't. Mm-hmm. And I avoid a lot of the news. That's not out of ignorance. I'm an educated person. How much doom and gloom do I actually want to read about? And it's... I think it's sad in so many ways. Gosh, I wouldn't even know where to start with that, to be honest. I know in my world, things are as good as they can be. And outside of that, I think things are are tough. People are worried, people are anxious and they're stressed. And that's not everyone either. You know, we can't say that everyone's feeling the same way or anything like that. hmm. Well, it's it's an interesting paradigm shift. I, I love asking the question because you know, we have all these bullet points to talk about that are phenomenal bullet points and we'll get to them, but I like getting, you know, well, someone like you, it's an interesting perspective anyway, because like you're dealing with people who are inevitably quote unquote living through whatever the hell is going on in 2020 yeah. and 2021. And again, you can, you know, surmise what you, what you will. And, and as I say, you know, from a quantum physics consciousness perspective, we are exactly where we place our consciousness, right? So if you want to focus on the narrative of doom and gloom and fear porn and all that, then you will get that. But if you want to focus on creativity and, you know, serving humanity creation at your highest and best, you'll get that. I love that. And I think that's really interesting because for me, that comes with some guilt. I'm not 
the the doom and gloom. Sure. I know where I am and I know where I want to be. And that's not always easy for people to do in this day and age as well. Because right. with that, there comes a lot of the guilt, but there also comes a lot of the assumed ignorance. What, what do you mean you don't know what's going on in this part of the world? Or you don't know what's going on in there? And it's like, well, I'm choosing what I feed my mind with. That's the key. Um, it's choosing to place your consciousness. You know, if you're familiar with the works of Neville Goddard, you know, you create your heaven on earth by where you place your consciousness. So yeah. again, it is a conscious choice. And, I, and I'll get off of this, but again, it's beautiful because in truth, Everything that's out there, again, when I say out there, the narrative is still a choice. No one is walking up to somebody's head with a gun and saying, if you don't do this or that, I'm going to kill you. So at the end of the day, again, and there's a lot of, again, fear porn. There's a lot of victimhood. At the end of the day, every human is still getting to consciously choose through their will and intention what they want. Don't say anything else because anything else to that is just your a self-talk story that you're telling yourself. So again, you're right. You still can choose resonance or you can, I always say re you choose resonance or dissonance. And, you know, we're now in a place again on this planet where whatever path you choose is up to you. So let's get into your first points. Um, and you're an imposter syndrome coach itself, but what is that? <laughs> What, I mean, what does that mean to find that for the audience? Oh, this is good. If I'm a breakthrough imposter syndrome coach, then my objective is to work with people who are experiencing the imposter syndrome and help them get through it and live the life that they want to live beyond that. And that might look like different things for different people, depending on the context that we're looking at. It might be work related, it might be a personal situation. And it, so coaching all starts with that, that particular point of where am I now? okay, I'm not particularly happy with this. Where is it that I want to go? Where do I want to be? And so it's about working through that imposter. It doesn't necessarily mean that we eradicate it completely because hand on heart being fully transparent here as well. I continually deal with mine. Of course. But it's when we break through it, we also gain more tools, techniques, skills, and tips in order to manage it even better. It's like working with stress as well. Stress isn't completely eradicated from our lives. It's how we learn to manage it. Right. It's beautifully mm -hmm. stated. Um, everyone has an imposter syndrome. Yeah. When you quote unquote make it. I mean, I could go really deep on this. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> from a consciousness perspective, all we are is consciousness anyway. We're not these doing, you know, Linda's and Jays. We're we're, we're consciousness, you know, encompassed in these physical bodies, these avatar physical bodies for, for ambulation around the third dimension of experience in life. But, you know, at the end of the day, in truth, we all have this because our egos are built to keep us in survival programming of course. at base essence. And so you have to learn as you're navigating again through the third dimension, when the ego is calling the shots you know, how to reserve it and constrain it and pull it in. And then of course, when the higher self or your intuition or however you classify it is, which is ultimately what you want calling the shots as much as possible, because that part of you, again, the higher self, literally the higher self aspect of you as a conscious being uh, is going to choose love and is going to choose resonance and is going to choose what serves you at your, at your highest and best. And I think you know, the great Gary Zukov, his book this summer, I forget what it's called now. I read it back in June, amazing book. And I know you know who Gary is, but like the, the reality is, is that, you know, he comes up with the two statements. He says that humanity always has a choice. Mm -hmm. We can react out of fear or respond out of love. Mm -hmm. Completely. And a lot of us react out of fear. We react from that place of, a lack, a place of lack. Exactly. I, do, I don't have, and what, what happens next? And, and I'm afraid of this as well. It can be so instantaneous, so reactionary. So true. So beautifully stated. That's exactly right. I mean, that not that amazing though, too? Like how lack and scarcity and limitation mm -hmm. is just, it's like, it's, it's mind control, conditioned, traumatized programming that all of us inherit. Yes. Like, it's crazy how yeah. much you have to deconstruct that, right? Yes. And, 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 you know, let's face it, we're probably around the same age. I think you're 27 and I'm 30. Just kidding. <laughs> 21. But, she's like, dude, you just gave me six years. Come on. But the, the, the reality is, is that our parents and especially their parents mm -hmm. 
Linda, they came from the Great Depression. Mm. People today have no concept, again, because history is being eradicated, but like these are people who stood in food lines for six to eight hours a day to have one meal, not for themselves, for their families. Yeah. So imagine the trauma, again, this transgenerational, transpersonal, whatever you want to call it, that is ingrained yeah. in their parent, you know, again, our grandfathers and then their the kids, which is our parents, and then even into us. So yes. all of us have to deconstruct this. It's very, it is generational, Jay. I love the way you said that as well. And so much of it is whether it's fears around, around money, around success, yes. just all of those limiting beliefs that are passed down. And it's, it's ever so, it's like, it's ever so quietly woven in as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's not like, mm -hmm. you know, it's this loudspeaker, this message, but it's, it's consistently there as well. We're fed this consistently sometimes. Well, you have to choose, and this is what mm -hmm. you do as a coach, and we're going to get to that, but you have to make a choice as a free, I like to call them sovereign, empowered, free soul, mm -hmm. yeah. what you are going to use and 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 receive as your programming. Mm -hmm. And obviously you choose, and as do I, you know, the glass is half full, but I was raised in an environment where it was half empty. Mm -hmm. I mean, my dad literally taught me that you should prepare for the worst because if you do, then nothing can phase you. When it <laughs> I mean, like, that's like the opposite of quantum physics. And I was literally into that realm of existence until I was 35. And, you know, for the record, I'm almost 51. So, I mean, like that kind of programming is very difficult for anyone to overcome. And again, I don't blame my dad. That's all he no. knew. My dad was doing the best he could. But I mean, of imagine... Course living in that con that construct and as you know because you coach everyone we're all in the same boat in so many ways we're all unified at a soul level but it's like so many people have that construct right of course they do and like you said again we're unaware of it until it's it can be it's thrown right in front of us we're mm -hmm. faced with something with some kind of a challenge or something we feel stuck in life something happens we're like what is this what's going on yeah. I'm not moving forward freely, confidently in the way that I would like to. And that's the power of coaching then, right? It's it's unraveling that, seeing what's behind it, identifying it, naming it, and helping somebody then move forward with that as well. But some people don't carve out the time or they don't have that awareness mm -hmm. to recognize what it is that's holding them back. So they, the narrative in their head is, this is just the way it is. This is just me. I've always been like this. I am like this. And I will continue to be like this. And it's like, no, nope. So to that point, the next point that we're going to talk about is anxiety and worry, which I love talking about this mm. because I mean, true story. And I've said this a couple of people. So for you guys out there that are really hardcore Jake Campbell followers, just turn it off for 30 seconds. But my wife's mom is a Latin first generation Hispanic and she married a tall white man in a suit. And she literally told my wife when she was growing up that she said, Monica, if you care, you worry. And so she was brainwashed and conditioned by that. And again, a lot of people in the Catholic religion get that conditioning of worry, right? Worry. If you care, you worry. And so my wife had to overcome that. And, and she still finds herself in that state of mind, whenever it gets hurried, harried, weird, you know, kids, you know, being a mom, as you know, there's, you're married, you're wearing a thousand hats in a day in an hour of time sometimes. And it's like, it, 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 it's funny when we talk about it, cause her and I are always walking this path and doing these kind of things. She's my spiritual mentor. And it's like, can you imagine how many women, and again, this goes across all Abrahamic religions have been, had that hammered into them that to care is to worry. Absolutely. The story that I used to tell myself was I'd wake up in the morning and I would actually look for something to worry about. If I, I know, I, I hear myself, I hear myself, right? So I'd wake up in the morning. Now, usually it would be an instant because that's how, what, that's exactly what I trained my brain to do. You wake up and you worry. Now, if there wasn't something to worry, then I was worried. Wow. So I'd be thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on a second. Where's that thing that I need to worry about? Because there was always something. Wow. What a way to live. What a way to start your day. I can't Awful. even imagine. Yeah. Oh. My wife was the same way. 
she 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 told me again the programming but she told yeah. me that like she called it the drunk monkey mind right the drunk it just wouldn't shut off no. and so the easiest way to shut it off was to do exactly what you just said is pick something and start focusing on it which was obviously negative and worry fear yeah that's crazy and tell me about it i mastered it <laughs> And then, it, well, it comes back to that again. We do these things for so long that they become ingrained. They mm -hmm. become so habitual that we just do them automatically, which makes it more challenging then to create something different to do. Beautiful. What is the difference between anxiety and worry to you? So for me, it's worry is very specific and, and anxiety is, is general. Sometimes mm -hmm. you might not even be able to put your, your hand or your finger on what the thing is that you're anxious about. But I might be worried about being late for this podcast. I might be worried about, I don't know, paying my rent or something. The anxiety might be something even bigger that I can't pinpoint. I know right. it's there. It's a lot larger. Anxiety, we often feel it in our bodies as well. It's not just a thought. Anxiety comes with those pictures. And it comes with those, those bodily sensations as well. So it's felt, often felt, not always, it's often felt a lot more than worry. And worry tends to be fleeting. Right. It seems, often seems right. more solvable. Well, I'm right. worried about turning up, you know, showing up late for this podcast. Well, I could set an alarm. Okay, right. Now I'm anxious about going, I know, I'm anxious about going out during the pandemic. It's like, well, right. whoa, what do I do about that? Because the more I start thinking about it, then my thoughts images of something happening i start you know sweating or my heart starts pounding right. a bit more so we feel it a lot more and it tends to be less solvable than worry so i would assume that you know to go back to the whole thing of i don't know what you, you call it the pandemic i mean we come up with a hundred different names for whatever is going on from last year to now but uh it seems like i call it the great consciousness separation it's like the dark night of the soul for humanity it's like, again, where do you place your consciousness with all of this insanity and zaniness? It's like, you have to do, you have to become a master. And again, place your consciousness, you know, from a vibrational scale in resonance or, you know, in love, or again, service to creation at your highest and best is, you know, however you want to classify it. But it's real interesting to see how many people who never had anxiety in their life, at least that they knew of mm -hmm. have exploded in the last year and a half. And I think, and I, I want your answer or your insights on this, but I think it really does come down to be that most people up until 2020, let's say March when it really blew up, mm -hmm. had a box, a sandbox, and, and it was carved out and they were comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, they went from here to there and they took their two trips a year and you know, they made this extra amount of money that they saved to buy crypto or Bitcoin or, you know what I mean? Like everybody had a mapped out box. And then all of a sudden, the great shit show of humanity in the 21st century, 22nd century, as it goes into, has now erupted. And it's like, unless you are qualified slash capable and of course determined to go within, right, to do a meditative slash contemplative introspective practice mm -hmm. at work, as I call it, to, to turn to the still small voice, everything now is upside down. So if you don't have that inner work practice, and I, I'm interested in your insights, you're dealing with anxiety. I mean, there is yeah. no two ways around it. I, I, I'm interested in your thoughts on that. One of the things that you just said there has really struck me in terms of the language that we use around it as well. Everything has turned upside down. So we can handle these kind of you know, daily challenges that come our way. It's like, oh, this happened and that happened. And I might, might feel a bit peed off about it or whatever, but I'll work through it. Mm -hmm. And multiply that by a million, by five billion, whatever. And all of a sudden, so much is outside of our control. There's restrictions. So there's a lot of, whoa, that doesn't sit well with me. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of unknown. And a lot of that is fed. A lot of it is fed through the media. It's fed through, it's fear mongering as well. And so all of a sudden, the capabilities that we have, the skills and the tools and the techniques that we have seem quite redundant because they're not helping us stay going and manage this, our daily lives. Because like you said, the sandbox has just been completely. Hey guys, what's going on? 
If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the Fully Optimized Health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to Fully Optimized Health dot com and sign up and I'll see you and talk to you soon. Well, I was just going to say, you know, I'm, I'm echoing, but I'm adding the byproduct of the unravel, the flip, the inversion is that people's health has gone to shit. Mm -hmm. Like literally. And again, you know, and, and I don't ever like to make excuses because we always are empowered or can choose to be sovereign, empowered and free. But you know, the, the easy excuse was like, well, my gym closed. Right. And mm -hmm. I can't go in, you know, to the grocery store to order organic food or buy organic food. I mean, there's a million excuses that the last two years have created, but because of the anxiety, which is the real stem root cause, people just froze. They paralyzed, they're paralyzed, you know, fear freeze. is, as you know, yeah. debilitating. Yes. And it's that, that freeze, fight or flight. Right. 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 And I think a lot of us, again, it's not everyone, but a lot of us froze. Mm -hmm. What do I do? How, or maybe we didn't even ask those those more powerful questions. Yeah. It was you know some of those more redundant questions like why is this happening? Yeah, you know instead of that, well, wh what do I have within me to manage this? What are the resources I have available? Who can I speak to about this? Who can I rely on, talk to, and trust? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, it's no wonder. Yeah. It's an interesting world that we, we find ourselves into, but, but, but again, you know, I, and again, this is why you're, you have a lot of clients right now and you know, the opportunity is amazing. And a lot of that is your consciousness. Like you told me off air before we started. I mean, you mm. know, you have to focus on the glass is half full. There is a massively creative opportunity everywhere. Everywhere I look, I see opportunity mm. versus the people that are down here, literally fearful, you know, I mean, you know, you said it about the worry. I mean, think, and, and again, I'm not labeling or judging or condemning. I'm just making this as a point of reference, but how many people right now, Linda, literally go to bed at night and their thoughts are, oh my God, I hope I don't wake up tomorrow with COVID or, oh my God, I have to go and get a fifth shot. Or, you know, I mean, there's so many people right now that put their head to bed down at night in fear consciousness or fear-based programming and you as you and i know you already said it you know parasympathetic nervous system you're in fight or flight you cannot be in resonance if you're in fear of course you can't not at all but unless you have the ability you have the tools to change it then again you feel stuck and your narrative it doesn't just become you know, this is a this is a COVID thing or this is a weekly mm -hmm. thing. This is right. just me today, whatever, and I can manage this. That becomes more of a full time narrative. Mm -hmm. This is now who I am. Right. I'm stressy. I'm I'm a worry. I'm a worried person. I'm an anxious person. My anxiety. And we hear people describe it like this as well, Jay. It's it's full on embodiment and ownership of it. Mm -hmm. My stress. My anxiety. My worry. Taking that on at identity level as opposed to the anxiety that I'm experiencing, the feelings that, I, that I'm experiencing, this thing that I'm moving through instead of this thing that I'm in and I'm mm -hmm. stuck in it. Fascinating. Self-worth, self-belief, self-esteem. I like to call it self-talk slash story. Yeah. Why do some people even now have amazing creative abilities, you know, come on podcast and talk to two people that have never met before, you know, versus the people that are just moping now, you know, begin the last year and a half has decimated their courage, their confidence, their creativity. And, you know, now they're just, they're existing. I, you know, I'd really like to get your insights on that. I mean, let's face it. A lot of people, again, the sandbox broke, you know, they're now lost inside a new sandbox, which is a new world because everything that they consider being in their circle of, you know, their force field of protection is now a bit obliterated. Yeah. And so they just walk around aimlessly. And I mean, you can see this wherever you go, you are, you know, you're in New York, I'm in LA or close enough. And 
I, I get, I tell people this all the time, Linda, you go out into a large public place and space now, and literally you see people that are walking around like unconscious because they're in such a bad place. And again, it wasn't always like this. And I know that the earth has not really changed that much, but obviously the narrative has changed. So, so how do you, you know, what is your advice, you know, and, and we are going to get into solutions because I always do, you know, towards the end, but like, how can a person walking right now, walking around completely aimless, what is the first step for them to find help solution? The first step is always recognizing that what it, what you're doing now is in working and having a desire for change without mm -hmm. that desire, nothing is going to work. Right. And keep in mind as well that some people love their problems. They love the worry. They they own it. Like we just said, they own the anxiety, they own the worry, and they own the stress. Because it's something for them, they believe right. that it serves them in some way, shape, or form. So the desire to change has got to be number one. The second step then, as soon as, as long as you have that desire, identifying and getting clear on what it is that you want instead. And that sounds easy, right? And it sounds simple. Simple doesn't mean easy. But it's then it's looking at, right, this is what I'd love to be able to do. What would I have to do first? What would I have to do first? What would I have to do first? And keep chunking down until you get to something that does seem easy. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's picking up the phone and telling somebody, look, this is what I'm experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. I feel alone in this. I would love somebody to hear me out. So it could just be voicing, getting something out of your head and onto paper. You've got to identify what it is that you want instead. Beautiful. You know, I think my, my, uh, my wife's dad, who's a 38 year recovered alcoholic, amazing guy. You know, he, his, his statement is until people get sick and tired of being sick and tired, they'll never change. And right. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like it's, it's echoing what you're basically saying. It's like, until you actually have the will and the intention to change, it's not going to matter. And you're right. I mean, how many people are addicted to their self-talk drama story? Oh my gosh. It's you their know, life. It's and like I already said, my story, one of the stories that I used to tell myself was that worry story. Mm -hmm. The other story then that I got so caught up in was you know I battled with an eating disorder for years as well that was my thing right and yeah. I actually and it sounds really strange to say it but it gave me you know this was my thing my thing was this control around food I had great control over it it was brilliant and then it's I start getting to the stage of right I need to get through this you know I need to get help right when I started getting help first did I actually want it no I didn't because I didn't want to get better because if I right. got better I didn't have the thing Right. That I felt I had so much control over. Right. It I think. Got, go ahead. No, no, you So go. it got to the stage then, just coming back to what you were saying about that will and that desire to change. It had to be, get so bad for me to say, something has got to change. I, I, I have no quality of life right now. It has got to change. I didn't know how, but that didn't matter because as long as you want to, you'll find the steps, you'll find the way. Sadly, I'm glad you recognize that. We can talk about that if you want. Uh, my wife also loves to say that most people don't give an absolute shit about their health until it's gone, right? Mm. And as you and I know, I see this all the time in the entrepreneur space. You know, the guys are hustling, they're grinding, they're doing what they got to do, and they get the 10 million net worth or whatever, and they're literally one foot in the grave. Mm. They're physiologically near, near death. Mm. And then they come to people you know, and they're like, I need help, you know, and in their mindset, it's a 90 day plan and I'm going to be back to good. Right. And you're like, dude, it took you 27 years to look like you are right now. Like yeah. this is not going to be easy. So I always tell people like, again, you know, how do you start one step in front of the other? Right. You know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? But at the end of the day, it still comes back to conscious will and intention. And okay. if I did all of this quote unquote negatively to get to where I am now that I, and I truly do desire to change, then you can do it, but you have to look at it from a realistic perspective. And as you know, today, especially with the internet, there's just so much lying and so much absurdity of people 
promising people miracles and promising people that, you know, again, I always hear the, the how do I call it? The, the self-improvement entrepreneurs are always talking about, you just need a 90 day boot camp, bro. <laughs> But so many people, Linda, are literally hornswoggled by the idea. Of course they are, They Jay. can get their, you know, easy button fix mode. Of course. By committing to 90 days. And it's like, no, dude, this is a lifestyle. This is a new, you got to change your life. You have to change your habits forever or nothing will, nothing will change. And, you know, the, as you know, the key is, the key in everything is, is balance, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's never going to be about doing more of this or more of that. It's always about balance and then finding out, is it creating joy? Because if it doesn't create joy, it doesn't matter. You're not going to stay balanced, right? Like you've got to get to a place where you feel, again, I don't like the word happy because happy is transient and fleeting. Joy is a state of being yeah. is where each of us has to get to, you know, are we in a work-life balance? that produces joy. And again, I know it's not, you know, joy all the time, but can you no, get, that's to, not balance. Exactly. Can <laughs> you get to a place where your life is regularly creating joy? Yeah. I love the balance element of things, Jay, because people will often say to me, Oh, I want more work-life balance. And one of the first questions I'll say to them is what does it, what does balance mean to you? And they're stuck straight away. Cause how often again, do we press pause and think about, Oh, I want balance, balance, balance. What does it actually mean? What would life be like for me if I was in balance? But also thinking that it's not something tangible. Because if it's something tangible, you either have it or you don't. But exactly. rather it's that it's it's changeable. So it's flexible. And I'll say to people as well, it's like if I sit on, you got to keep moving to keep balance. If I sit on a seesaw with my husband, like I'm short and I'm slight. He's not. Now, if he moves at all on the seesaw, there's a huge change there. Okay, even just a little bit. So we got to keep moving in order to keep that balance that we like. And sometimes we might feel out of balance, but we can adjust, we can be flexible, we can pivot, we can create that balance again. You need to have the awareness first of what it is, where could I potentially be out of balance? What helps me create balance and bring more joy into my life? Beautiful. I got two more points with you. I'm going to flip one of them because I think talking about how coaching can help is better to end with. Um, but I mean, I could talk a whole podcast on this next point on navigating change. Now, yeah, I always say this and I've said this to, I don't know how many people in my life, but the only thing inevitable in living in a physical avatar body is change. Yeah. But yet so many people resist change they yeah. cannot adapt and pivot under any circumstances it's the hardest thing to get someone to just accept that their way of doing things or their way of whatever can change they can fluctuate they can adapt they can make edits and still live the life that they were living. But it's just, I mean, again, it's the sandbox principle, right? Like this is my life. This is how it is. I've created this. I've carved this out. It took 25 years or whatever. And no, I'm not going to change. And it's, as you know, it's also, a, it's, 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 it's mental too. It's, of course. it's this way, you know, this is my uh, soapbox. You know, this is where I learned, you know, I'm a Yale grad. I mean, it doesn't even matter. It's, it's conditioning that you have so like stuck you're, you're stuck, but it's also like your mind is inflexible. The rigidity yeah. is not allowing you to have any kind of flexibility. And, you know, for me to, to relate it to my life, I am actually blessed in that my parents moved me around. So I went to five high schools in five States in four years. So I didn't have any other option. Right yeah. now I hated my mom and dad and I would have been just like anybody else resistant to it, but I didn't have an option. So, it, you know, looking back, I'm grateful that that stuff happened to me because since then in my life, dude, like change is like something I live for. Like, yeah, there you go. Do it. You know, you, you know, go. the statement from entropy comes creation. Mm -hmm. So blow it all the F up if you have <laughs> to, because it's energy 
that's, you know, again, the law of conservation states that you, you know, remove the negative and bad and positive has to come in. That's literally the law of conservation. So, I mean, if you understand these things from, you know, and again, I didn't until I was in my early forties, but from entropy does come creation. So if you can just understand that you can blow all your shit up, it will get better. But again, it's a mindset. It's it's a it's a it's allowing that energy and that frequency to shift from this level of mind where I can't have that happen. I can't change. It's so hard. Limiting belief, and also the language there as well. Right, something is hard. The change is hard. Right. Your brain doesn't want to do something that's hard. It wants to do something that's simple and something that's easy. Right. So you keep telling your story. You keep telling yourself that same story that it's hard, it's difficult, it's challenging. Well, that's what it's going to be. Right. And we can also be quick to forget all the change we've been through already. Yeah. You haven't been the same from day one to who you are now. You've been through so much change. As we get older, sometimes I think there's more resistance to change because we stand to lose more. More fear has set in. Only sometimes, of course, again, some people are sailing through navigating this change beautifully and continue to do so what can we learn from people who are doing that mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes i hear oh it's easy for them because <laughs> oh i'm sorry what do you know that person really well or you you know they have some kind of secret skill or a secret tool or like what is it that's different oh because they have money they right. have the support from their family they don't have a mortgage they have this and it's like wow right okay tell me more curious as my good friend rex bear says bills and issues everybody's got them. <laughs> I love that. hey guys and gals what's going on if you're looking to use peptides make sure you go to my number one source limitless life nootropics for healing with bpc 157 and tb 500 or fat loss with ipamorelin cgc 1295 and aod 9604 to immunity with ta1 thymus and alpha one Limitless has a huge selection. Go to limitlesslifenootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. I mean, it but it's it's literally that's the key of the key to life is mm. we're all at a soul level connected. We're all, you know, people yeah. talk about unity. They, you know, they use that word like so loosely. It's so cliche now, but at a, at a real spiritual, energetic level, we are all connected. So if you start understanding it from that base awareness, you do realize that everybody has the same problems. It doesn't matter who you are, how much money you have, what your job is, what you look like, guy or girl, you know, marriage, single, it's all the same shit. But you have to get to that place of awareness where it's like, you know what, man, that person is no better or no less than me. And so many people create stories, you know, in their head about other people. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, dude, I mean, again, it takes time. I mean, I, you know, I did not become consciously aware of any of this stuff until I was 41 and I had to literally go through every negative possible thing. I mean, my ex-wife put me in jail. I had my kids kidnapped from me. I attempted after that, after I unraveled in society and lost all my, you know, state standing as who I was, you know, to realize that all of that was nothing. Right. Yeah. So, so, I mean, everybody has to go through again, whatever you want to call it, the dark night of the soul or just getting to rock bottom. And again, a lot of people don't, right? I mean, some people make it through life and they never, ever really get to that level of yeah. where they're forced to adapt. It's just yeah. so comforting. And then again, they never transition. They never make changes. They just live inflexible and that's fine. You know, you probably come back and have to reboot and do it again. And maybe you have to reboot many, many times, who knows? But I mean, the reality is, is that at base essence, again, we are just energy. And, you know, I'm reading this phenomenal book right now, Consciousness of What I Am, by Joseph Goldsmith or Joel Goldsmith. Or, I, it's by a pen name. It's an amazing spirituality book. The guy wrote like 30 of them. But, you know, that's what we are. We are literally at base essence consciousness, regardless of your understanding of spirituality or, you know, I don't like to even say religion, but just awareness, whatever your understanding of awareness is, that's what we are. 
And so when you can see yourself as just consciousness, you're not Linda Bonner or Jay Campbell, you're just consciousness. It's so much simpler to relate and accept that everyone else has got the same things going on. And you're not different or better or lower or higher. Everybody is the same. But it's hard, again, until we can get to that level of awareness, again, this identity of self, hmm. to, to, to truly, you know, make, make yourself relatable so that other people can feel comfortable, you know, energetically around you, you know. And again, this all goes back to like, you know, how do you, when you're out in public, are you smiling? You know, are you appearing gregarious? Are you appearing passionate? Are you appearing energetic? And like, you know, I like to call it high vibration. You know, are you down here with your head down, like avoiding people like, you know, or even if you look menacing or something like that, you know, it's like everything is energy and frequency and you have to get to an awareness where it's like, again, we're all the same, you know, and, and, and when you get to that level of awareness and again, it does take time. I mean, the ancient Egyptians did not allow people into the mystery schools or even be, to become an initiate until you were 40. They basically said, look, you needed three decades of life on earth before you were aware enough to actually understand what consciousness is, right? And I probably am the perfect, you know, allegory to that because that's when I woke up or, you know, at 41. And again, I had to have all these things happen to me. And I'm sure you have a similar story. I mean, so many people have similar stories, but it, it, it really does, Linda, get to a place of conscious recognition. And, you know, to SAG for you right now in this co podcast, this is where you come in. You know, you help people you know, through your coaching on, you know, teaching these principles of like, it's okay to be a human being and to deal with all of this stuff. But at the same time, right. At the same time, there's nothing wrong with it. Not at all. I think it's owning your story. Everyone's got a story, Jay. Yes. And of that story, everyone's got a chapter that they don't want to read out loud. But how are you using the story? Do you use it to empower yourself? Do you play the victim card? Do you, right. do you use it to propel you forward or to keep you locked in your past? Because again, everybody's got a choice. Yes, we all have a story. We've all got stuff going on. It's not about living in la la land thinking that everything is oh, fantastic and it's always going to be this way. It's how, do, how do I navigate it? What can I use to navigate this even better? And but how many people, people but how many people, Linda, right now to that point, the illusion of technology, social media, whatever, you know, people invent, you know, people create realities, so to speak, that aren't really real. So, I mean, it goes back to the imposter syndrome. You know, it's a lot easier to, to look at someone, you know, again, through, through the lens of social media or whatever any technology that has video, I think. Yeah. And, and take a different message altogether and say, Oh, well, that person is so-and-so like you said, like, well, that person has more money or that person came from a better family or blah, 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 yeah. more opportunity. And I, I, I'm making this point because I think it's harder now because this is an illusion because this does paint a big illusion for a lot of people. And so, you know, what are your thoughts and insights on like making sure that people understand that this is not, reality and oftentimes it's the furthest thing from it mm, i love that you gotta keep checking in right and reminding yourself as well and separating from that it can be so easy to get to fall into that comparison trap to fall into the things are easier for them so again being aware of the story that you tell yourself being aware of are you comparing negatively are you comparing upwards are you comparing downwards what are you doing with those comparisons? What are the triggers that encourage you to step into that comparison as well? Do you notice it's when you spend time on social media? Or another great question to ask yourself is, what, is, like, what do you experience on social media? Do, do you experience joy? Do you experience negativity? What specifically is it? Because then you can do something about it. Beautiful, yeah. It's a good, really good point. There's so many false narratives. And of if, you get, if, if you get sucked into it, it's still a choice. I love how we often talk about that 
the inner voice, right? The, the voice in our heads. Sure. And I had a conversation with someone just the other day and I thought, you know what, if you only have one voice, I think you're quite lucky because there's a right. whole committee or there's a whole something else like going on in my head. There's a number of voices. There's a number of, of things going on in there. And who am I choosing to listen to? And what's the positive intent behind that voice as well? Because you know, often it's it's not malice. It's a it's a something trying to protect me. So when we talk about the imposter syndrome, we talk about fear or something like that. You know, don't do that. Don't put your book out there. Okay, and why not? Well, because if you put your book out there, more people can judge you. Are you not afraid of that? And it's like, oh gosh, I didn't even, you know, uh, I wondered what that was. So checking in with those voices as well, calling them out and awareness, 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 Jay. Awareness, it's the key. Mm -hmm. It's funny you said that about the voices. In the last four years, I've dramatically uh, enhanced my inner work, right? It's an absolute daily focus. And I can't be Jay Campbell now as a father, as a husband, as a social media person, whatever the hell I am. <laughs> unless, unless I, unless I, I mean, I mean this, unless I spend time in conscious, contemplative, introspective work, I, I won't call it meditation. Sometimes I meditate. Sometimes I just sit there in silence with my dog in my backyard and yeah. listen the wind and you know sounds of nature which is god mm. if i was not doing that linda there is no possible way that i could deal with like all of the amazing things that i'm con consciously choosing to be involved with in my life and, and and i'm blessed that i consciously choose and i know a lot of people don't you know and again if that's where you're at you know you can choose to not be there you you can fix your life you can get out of the sandbox but um it's funny because I, I, you know, I know I just said a lot of things, but like, you know, you triggered me in this statement of like your the self talk, mm -hmm. and the more introspective work I do, the more I actually find myself speaking to my higher self. Of course, affirmations in the mirror. I'm in the shower in the morning. I'm listening to my chakra tuning, um, and I'm literally thinking which, you know, it'd be better if I was being, but sometimes I'm, I'm being and thinking because I'm thinking about like how I'm going to be more or be better. So I'm not technically doing, 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 I'm still thinking about being, but it is interesting that the more self reflection you do, the more you do talk to yourself. But I, I would, I would, I would ask, you know, for your insights, are you also though limiting all those other voices, those drunk monkeys? Is it more now you're just speaking from a place of the higher part of your consciousness when you're doing this work? This is great. For me personally, it's a combination. The voices haven't gone away anywhere. Some of them have gotten weaker. Some of them have backed off. Okay. They're on some, I don't know, they're on a summer holiday somewhere, right? But they, they do, they, they tend to right. come back. Right. And again, it's what do I do with them? Because they used to run the show years yeah, ago. Yeah, of course. Jay. Oh, they were like, look at us, look at us, look at us. And it's like, oh gosh, yeah, of course. Here's all the focus. So imposter shows up or the fear or the, the mom voice, you know, like my, my mother's voice. And I'm going, sure. oh, gosh, do that, Linda. My gosh, really? And it's different ways now of handling them because I can, because I do. I'm not afraid of them. I'm not as afraid as I used to be. And when I remember growing up, what is it they used to say? Talking to yourself is a sign of madness. You know, what's it that you be going around talking to yourself? And I think those conversations now are so powerful. It's the exact opposite. Yeah. I think if somebody was to if somebody was to hear some of the conversations I have with myself sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's getting it out of my head and it's getting a different perspective on it, asking powerful questions, right. getting the answers that I need. Right. Yeah. Right. You're, you're becoming a more powerful being by pr um, practicing Yes. how you're going to be, how you're going to speak, how you're going to think. I mean, again, it's the whole from the beginning of this conversation. Are you going to respond out of love or are you going to react out of fear? And reacting out of fear is the default state of most people. And I think even reacting or responding there as well. 
is so powerful to think yes. about. Yes. So are we reacting to something emotionally or are we pressing pause, stepping back and taking time to think about what would be a better choice in this situation? Does what else do I have me? available? To, how does this serve me? Yes. Instead of boom, going to go straight in with that. It's like, whoa, hang on. It's beautiful. The master, Twice. the master, the, the perfect analogy is this. You're, you're doing your inward work. You've done your conscious reflection meditation in the morning and you have now, and again, this is different than it used to be because now we're all living in our homes for the most part and, you know, commuting and whatever what you do for, for income now, but you could leave and you were in this like, you know, state of Zen resonance, whatever. And then you get in your car and you start driving to work or wherever you're going and some maniac mm -hmm. cut you off on the freeway. Right now mm -hmm. your ego, which is a survivally built, mm -hmm. you know, our thing, you know, reacts again in the parasympathetic fight or flight, fight or flight, and you grip the steering wheel and you now have a choice to react again out of fear and drive up like another maniac and get next to them and flick them off or say you, whatever, or you, again, where your conscious master is now inward reflecting and instantly you wave at that person smiling and you're sending them in, in your mind consciously love. Hey, you must be having a bad day. I hope things yes. work out for you. Yes. Now from an energy thing, and this is where people lose it because that's cool, right? To say that, but energetically that person's dissonant frequency has just been disarmed by your loving slash resonant frequency that you sent back to them. So that, and again, this is all energy and this is all understood now, again, from a quantum physics standpoint, you literally just made that person who's clearly having a bad day. You just improved their vibration. You energetically raised their consciousness, even though they didn't want it because you sent them love and love again, resonance crushes dissonance, which is love, coherence, dissonance, incoherence. Yeah. So energetically, you're actually helping that person by not reacting in kind. And again, you know, this is the kind of stuff that human beings now have to choose as we move forward to truly raise the frequency of everybody, right? Because I mean, look, we're not talking about it in the show, uh, Linda, but things are weird now. And it can go real fast from weird to bad if people like us do not hold the line. And obviously you're doing this every day. I mean, I'm somewhat doing this when I speak to amazing people like you, right? But like, this is where we have to be now. And that's, I think the most important message of this com conversation in this podcast is you go into the universe and I go into the universe is that we have to consciously co-create a better world by staying from an action, a words, thoughts, and action standpoint in a harmonious, again, resonant field. Yeah. And every time you stay that way, you help everybody around you. Again, that's the thing, you know, uh, an interesting way to think about it or, or speak it into existence is like, if you, if you want to feel unconditional conscious love, 540 on this scale, go down and spend time with your dogs. Oh, your gosh, dogs oh. have unconditional love for you and they wag their tail and they get all excited and it's obviously instinctual for the master, but that's the energy and frequency of love, of truly unconditional love. And you do as a human being, you are affected by that energy of your dog. Do not think that you're not. And so like I always tell people like you're having a bad day, something really bad happens to you. Yeah. Go down and jump in a dog pile with your dog. And love her or him and feel that conscious love energy that he or she has for you. And it'll lift your spirits. It'll raise your vibration and you will be in a better place. But that's, you know, that's, that's what I say now is like, look, all of us who are walking the path have to help others just by who we are, not teaching, not proselytizing, not no. stating to them, but just by who you are being so that they can observe and they can learn. And again, it's an energy and frequency thing. If you are being a person of resonance, you are affecting their vibration too. And you are, you are raising them. But it's leading by example, isn't it? Modeling that behavior is the highest form of communication. Yes. So if you are trying to influence positively, yeah. it's, it's not about, 
it's not about doing that and, and teaching someone, oh, do this, do it my way or anything like that. It's it's demonstrating that. You want kindness, show that kindness, demonstrate it. If you want to see more respect in the world, then go out and do that as well. Those are my words. I'm sure it's Buddha. Beautiful. I mean, I, I, I always like to write down one quote. You said behavior is the highest form of communication. That's phenomenal. Yeah. I love that. Never heard that before. Amazing. Linda, yeah. you are amazing. And I truly appreciate you coming on the podcast here today. So um, these are obviously Linda's sites, guys. Um, LindaBonner.com, Facebook. Uh, she has a group, obviously. Uh, and yeah. then her Instagram is also Linda Bonner underscore life coaching. And then she is on Twitter. Linda Bonner Life Coach. Do not read my Twitter feed because I am a spiritual Tyrannosaurus on uh, on Twitter. So, uh, but I will follow you. But uh, is there anything else? You know, you get the final say. Anything else you would like to state? Thank uh, you so much, Jay. My book, my fabulous book, just three that. things, is out at the moment. Bite sized ways to transform your life. It's available on Amazon and all other fabulous online bookstores as well. So in the words of my granny at home in Ireland, you can fill your boots. I love that. Fill your boots. Um, fill just your boots. Before, well, before I let you go, because um, we didn't talk about the book, um, give me a high level pitch on why someone should buy your book. Oh, so just three things, bite-sized ways to transform your life. It's all about providing you with the skills, tools, and techniques to overcome challenges you're facing, daily challenges, and life's tougher curveballs as well overcome those successfully and move forward confidently in your life. Lots of different areas that we look at. It's unfortunately, it's not just three things. There's a lot more in there as well. But there's journal prompts, reflective questions to help you take action and start going after the, those goals that you want to achieve in life. Linda, amazing, profound podcast. I really, truly thank you Thanks for coming so on. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you. No, you're awesome. Amazing. I'm definitely going to pick up your book. Um, thank you again. It's all I can say. Don't so just guys, pick it up. Read it. <laughs> dude, I, I, I read every book. Trust me. I'm a vicious, I know, voracious I know. monster of cons consumption of, uh, of information that is resonant information. So for sure your book is. But uh, for all the people that are watching this podcast, obviously support the amazing people that come on the J Campbell podcast. So visit yeah. Linda at her website, lindabonner.com. Go to her Instagram and her Twitter, which is Linda Bonner underscore life coaching. And her Twitter is LB life coach. I'll probably start tweeting her. So you guys will see me for you guys that follow me on Twitter awesome. and purchase her amazing book on Amazon, which is just three things. And of course, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.